Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Entrepreneur Investor Connection. Um, I'm going to also go live on Clubhouse. Um, today, basically, what, I'm, what I want to show you guys again is, is uh, the next iteration of what I did yesterday, which was I was able to make money in the metaverse. I believe I got about, actually, at the end of the day, I did a little bit more task, and I was able to get uh, 300 sand total in about less than an hour of, of playing, and literally playing, trying to figure out sandbox as a whole. Because again, I come at this as an entrepreneur and an investor. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, what can I do to um, not only have fun? Of course, you know, it's not about fun only. It's really about um, understanding what's the opportunity here. Not just make money on playing games. I want to look at this as a business opportunity, as a um, entrepreneur and an investor, right? So when I come to this and I and I play, I'm looking for things like, okay, what could I use this for? Any of the projects I'm working on, any of the, um, there's a bunch of people that wanted the link here. So let me send this out real quick. Oh, wait, I'll do this somewhere else. Um, so basically, um, I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, what are the opportunities here? And as we play these games, I'm going to show you the, the new one today, which the, the genius thing I think about this rollout is they are creating a calendar of 18 days of new content that's going to come out. And every day is a new, new drop of a land with things to do. And as you do them, you will gain coins, NFTs. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, wow, they're, they're literally, you know, making an interactive marketing campaign where they're giving us money for doing it. So part of what I look at is I'm saying, okay, why not create content around this then? Why not look at how this works and make make the same exercises for some of the brands and partnerships that I'm working on and advising and all that stuff. So part of why I want to do this live is because I want to like get questions. I want to see what people think. Um, I also want to show this as the, the latest way of marketing your startup. Like this is them using me as a marketer because they're paying, they're literally paying me to market their product because what are you going to do? If you make a thousand sand, you know, I made 300 sand in one day. That's like, we could do the math. It's a few thousand dollars, right? And th then, okay, now I just told everybody I know, right? And now I'm making videos about it. That's marketing. It's not free marketing. They're paying me, but I paid them first. If you think about it, the only reason I am in this is because I bought land in their project. I bought an NFT. I bought four NFTs in their project. So in a way I did invest, I invested money and now they're paying me back as being an early investor, which is a, a thing I see happening more and more in this space, reward your early NFT investors somehow. And what, what is the way they're rewarding me this time there? If you do the task, you make a thousand sand, which that could be $7,000. Then they're also giving us three NFTs that supposedly are going to have great value. So now, not only was I rewarded for buying this land early with seven thousand, with a thousand sand, which could be seven thousand dollars, and of course the stuff can go up and down, left and right, as we all know. But also, they're giving me these three exclusive NFTs. I could choose to have that in my land, and you're like, oh, you must be an OG if you have this these specific NFTs. You're going to be looked at as an OG in this space. Who knows what the hell that means in the grand scheme of things? We don't know. We don't know where any of this goes. All you can do is be in as many games as possible. And when I mean games, I don't mean only metaverse games. I mean investment opportunities, right? Because when you look at, at um, venture capital and all of that, these com these venture capital firms do not know what the one idea is going to be that, that, that kicks off and makes them a lot of money. They invest in a bunch of things. And they just wait and see what it is. So when I look at the metaverse right now, there's really two players only right this second. There's Sandbox and Decentraland. 
And when you look at both of these, they took very different approaches. And what I liked about Sandbox is they took a heavy gaming approach. So when you look at, you know, their strategy of creating a new game a day that you can play, and if you have the Alpha Pass, which was a raffle. They didn't, they didn't let you buy it. You have to buy it off. I guess you could buy it. You can buy it for $10,000 right now, but they did a raffle. I'm not sure if all of them were raffled or you, there was a certain amount raffled and then the rest you had to pay for, but it's all very good strategy for future projects. So I like to be in as many of these as possible. So I can bring that understanding to future advising projects or any of my own. So, all right, I'm going to share the link with more people really quickly. So if you want to watch along, um, you can, all right. So let me do this really quickly. Any questions from anybody in the clubhouse? Milan, what's up, man? How are you? Uh, you That's can speak good. anytime. How are you? How's everything going with your project? Good, bro. Good. Got a lot of stuff going on. We're going to be dropping shoes too. Nice. Um, For the avatars? Yeah, it's going to be physical and digital. Um, physical and Italian. digital. Nice. Italian made shoes, Italian made sneakers, boots, women's shoes. Um, so we're going to fill up the marketplace with that today and then drop them next week. That's pretty cool, man. I like congrats on that. I definitely want to see some of them shoes. I want some of those shoes. If you don't know, Milan is dropping um, his project is called Mirror Image. If you want to shill it, go ahead. Tell people where they can find it, how they can be involved while I, while I walk people through because it's another metaverse project. Milan is creating a metaverse project that you could be an early investor in. And I'm an advisor, yes. you know, the <laughs> full disclosure, I am an advisor, so not financial advice. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Mila. Yeah, I can do a quick show. So basically what we're doing is making avatars that are interoperable, which means they can go on any metaverse or game. We actually developed our own avatar file to make this happen. So if you want a mirror image, you could just go to mirrorimage.network. And like I said, we'll also have this marketplace um, where any brand can sign up and create their 2d photo products into 3d objects and nfts so when you buy the nft you'll get the digital and the physical drop ship to your house got it so you are offering the first buyer of the nft a physical version of the shoe but that what if i bought it on resale how does that work if you buy it on resale as of right now, you're only going to get the digital, but we are looking at how we can get inspectors in the middle, right? Because we need someone to expect the physical item to make sure it's still good. Yeah, um, so that makes sense. So that system in place, we can then have a resale with the physical as well. That makes sense. That actually makes a lot of sense because that's what the art market is doing as well. Like if you buy a, you know, a million dollar piece of art and then it's an NFT, how do you... How do you, you know, like make sure that when the next person buys it, it doesn't have a hole in it, right? So you're going to need somebody else. Um, so it makes sense. I think uh, it's super exciting. All these metaverse projects are super exciting. Um, Milan's project, can you explain more what the project is overall? Because I think we went, you went straight to the shoe drop, but like people may not know the overall. Yeah, the overall is basically having yourself as an avatar um, and also protecting your data, right? So that's the main thing. And then we're also a play to earn platform. So um, as we mentioned, you know, in the emails for the team this week, we're going to make the self app, this avatar management app now, right? So okay. when you get your mirror image, it will be on a self app. You can do this virtual try on. So if you want to buy clothes, you can see how you look on it prior to it. And then as we go down in our roadmap, we'll eventually add the other features like earning self coins by self improvement and things like that. And we also are built on currently like four different metaverses. So we're on the central land, Neos, um, Holophoria and spatial right now. Um, in my opinion, Neos is the best out of, you know, let's say sandbox in the central land. Yeah. Um, Neos is the best Neos metaverse you've been in. Yeah, Neos is next level. I don't think anyone's going to be able to touch Neos for a while. Um, why? Because, why? Uh, why that? Why is that? Let me know. That sounds because of the creative control that they give their creators. Right? Um, you can pretty much make anything you want, and it's the most realistic looking metaverse that I've seen to date. Right? Like they, the Central Land's more like a two D version. Um, same thing with Sandbox. Um, but this one is actually like a real game, like a Call of Duty, Call of Duty looking type game. Right? So like, like a safe. higher level rendering and all that. Yep. And their okay. token and how they're doing in tokenomics is amazing. You know, they have people, 
um, pretty much giving them fiat money um, through Patreon. So you become a Patreon member. Um, depending on what level you go on Patreon, they'll actually airdrop you a certain amount of their NEOs tokens. So when they're doing that, they're building their liquidity and they're also giving the tokens directly to these holders, which makes their price skyrocket. I've seen over the last week and a half, their coin went from 76 cents to uh, six dollars well nine dollars and now it's at six but yeah it so the, has the central land and literally a week and a half based on that tokenomics in dollar value but not market cap right no way um market cap if i go back to it it was uh what's the market cap let's see market cap set whoa I think that's eight trillion. Does that say? No, uh, no way. <laughs> that would be crazy. No, that's a no, no, let me okay, see. What what is it? Neos? What's the token? Central. Um, Neos credits is called. But is it like that's on Coin Gecko and stuff? Yeah, it's on Coin Gecko, Coin Market Cap, and then you can go on. What is it called? It's actually at twenty eight million. Neos credits. N e o s r s e. All right, so here's some some not financial advice, but this could be the next um, you know big jump. All right, so two hundred forty five million dollar market cap. If you think about it, Decentraland and Sandbox are worth six billion dollars. So that is like twenty twenty four x or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a lot. So imagine if you put a couple bucks here and it ever gets to Decentraland level can make you a lot of money. Um, Milan is a, um, you know, entrepreneur, investor, looking at all these these um, metaverses. So his word I I listen to, and I got to check out Neos um, and see if I can buy some land and some token there. Um, this is the one that you said it works with, like, uh, Oculus? Yeah, it's all on Oculus. Um you can actually download it as a computer program, go on Oculus. Um, you can, that's pretty much it, but I know they're doing a bunch of stuff with that engine that they're actually going to release in December. So they're planning on having a even more powerful engine. That's going to technically be insane. And like I said, I don't think anybody's going to be able to compete with it. Not even Facebook for a while. Yeah. Because that's interesting. Just, yeah. And they're, they came from Facebook and like all these other big companies. So oh, like, so they left really to create this there yeah and they've been doing it since 2016 and you know they've been the most active metaverse to date technically because you know even though there's i think there's only 50,000 people but you can see how high the coin is right so it just shows hmm. you what the creative control that they're allowing to have it's creating different worlds so you can make anything you want to make a school you want to make a store anything you want it doesn't matter what size the file is you just have to make sure whatever files you're putting in is not killing your gpus but you have full control, creative control. That's interesting. I mean, I've been watching my three sons spend a lot of time on the Oculus. Like, it's pretty interesting. I didn't think it would catch on as fast. I thought you would get bored, but I guess the experiences are getting better because now my sons are like almost fist fighting for time on the Oculus. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to have to get more of these things. Um, I didn't really expect that at all. And it's happening faster. As an adult, when I go in there, remember, I was making AR, VR apps. For I've been making AR, VR apps for 10 years. So in the very early stages, I couldn't be in VR that long. It would really make me get a headache. And, like, it would throw off my whole day. Like, my equilibrium would get thrown off. So now I play this specific game. It's a graffiti game where I'm, like, making graffiti, like, when I was a kid. And I could be in there for a while, actually. I But it, there is a difference when I come out. I do feel a little bit off. But I'm in there for longer, much longer than I used to be able to. And I guess the tech is just getting better. I got to try Neil. So I'm going to download it and see how it goes. Um, good stuff. Thank you for the for the for um, for all of the information, Milan. So what I'm doing today, go ahead, any, anything else? No, I'll just saying no problem. All right. So what I'm doing today is I'm I'm literally trying to walk people through like things in the metaverse that I see and I have the opportunity. Luckily, I, I won this this um, raffle to get an alpha pass. So I'm able to go in and see more of what Sandbox has to offer. So today, this is the second game portal they, they release. Uh, I did the last one yesterday and I made uh, 
two thousand dollars in like an hour. Um, this one, I don't know. I think this is another hundred coins if you do it. So that's about uh, probably six hundred dollars or something like that. Uh, so we'll see. Let's see how it goes. Uh, right now, I'm just reading and doing the old school game stuff. But part of what I like to do while I do it is I like to think about the business opportunities here, right? So when I think about what happened yesterday and what I played, what I saw was there's a huge opportunity for education in this. Like gaming is 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 a is a format that allows people to through whatever, you know, uh triggers in your brain to continue to want to do more. But imagine what these guys are doing right now. What I think this is brilliant is they're using gamification to educate landowners on the opportunity they have within their platform. And that's super interesting. And that's what the metaverse kind of the big play with the metaverse is, right? Like we as humans, we've learned throughout the history, whatever you believe, we have evolved by learning in environments, right? Like that's how we as cavemen got to here, right? We've moved around environment and learned. The, the, the flat world of the internet has created a different way of learning, but this puts us back into that comfortable way of learning, right? Like, and that is super interesting to me. Again, I only play one game and this is the second one I played, but I would love anybody's uh, advice or, or um, comments on that anywhere. Um, check it sister. All right. All right. I'm getting spam. All right. Awesome. I made it. Um, so Love that support of early stage investors. All right. Um, you're gaining so much by getting land early. Yep. And this is just the beginning. Exactly. Can't imagine what it's going to look like in year two. Exactly. This stuff is, this is like the brand new. Is this game actually classifies as the metaverse, as, a, as the metaverse, or does this simply have the potential to become that in the future? I was believing that the metaverse doesn't technically exist yet. This is a good question. There's people who believe the metaverse is a state of interaction. I'm on Clubhouse right now. I'm on YouTube right now. I'm on Twitch. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. Technically, I'm on the metaverse, right? Because we're not talking to each other in person. You are interacting with me or watching me do something because of this state that has been created. Clubhouse can be considered a metaverse. LinkedIn video can be considered a metaverse. But if you were in here with me and we're playing this game together, that's a different level of metaverse. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, I got a phone call. Um, so this is where it gets a little different. Imagine like Fortnite and these other games where you can play with your friends together. That is a different level of metaverse, right? This means there's some glitches here too. That's how early it is. Is this guy trying to fight me or what? All right. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to have to fight this. I got to find a sword. Uh-oh. I'm dead. <laughs> um. Right. Uh, so this interaction of being in person together, doing something together is not new, right? There's a bunch of games like this. There's Fortnite, there's Call of Duty, there's all kinds. But there's really never been a way to actually make money together through the game and the world. And, and I believe this is considered a metaverse because... We are sharing space, not just interaction. How is it a game? Is it this? Is that? That's kind of a side point, I think. And again, I would love to hear what you think, especially you, Milan. What do you think is a metaverse and why do you consider Sandbox a metaverse? How do you see it? Yeah, I think there's just two sides of a metaverse where you have the centralized metaverse like Facebook is trying to do it and you have the decentralized version of it, which is decentralized, right? So um, 
the metaverse to me is just adding blockchain technology to the gaming environment and making a community out of it. It's pretty much what it is. So, yeah, I mean, I, I look at it the same way. I see this as an area where business can be done. Um, fun can be had concerts, galleries, everything can be had. Of course, this one has more of a little bit of a gamification to it than like Decentraland has games inside of it, but it's not like this. Uh, it's not like focused on gaming. That's that's the big difference I see here. Oh, basic sword. There it is. All right, now I can fight these guys. Um, so that is where I, I do see a very clear difference. And again, who knows who ends up winning out? Because I'll be honest with you. When I saw this, I didn't like the way it looked. I said, I don't want to... Um, I don't want to own land in there because I don't like, I don't think it looks real. I wanted something that looked more real. So it only exists here. Okay. Um, so I, I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna, not gonna buy land there. But then I thought to myself, what do you know? Who, do, who knows what people are going to end up doing? Just like Minecraft, millions of people every day play Minecraft. This looks a lot like Minecraft. And then what put me over the top was, one, I saw all the partnerships they had. They had a ton of partnerships. Snoop Dogg, Walking Dead, Atari, all these venture capital firms. And I said, okay, what do they know that I don't? And then I went in and I actually started stalking venture capitalist wallets <laughs> because you could do that. Um, like me, I have MiguelSanchez.eth. And if you know how to, you can go and look at all the coins, all the NFTs I have in that wallet. So I was able to do that with venture capitalists. And I saw they all have they all had sandbox. So I was like, okay, that means they know something I don't. So I'm going to bet on the fact that they know something I don't. So I said, you know what? I'm going to buy it. And I did. And I'm glad I did because... The land went up a lot. I bought it for fifteen hundred dollars per, and now the the cheapest you can buy is um, fifteen thousand. The last time I looked, but there's an algorithm. One of our um, developers at MetaBronx looked up where you can look up the land, and it will tell you through an algorithm what they believe the value really is. So he said that the land that I had, one of them was worth. Um, 25,000, one piece of land that I paid $1,500 for. Uh, all right. I was like, damn it. This is where I may need my kids to play these because I'm not a gamer like that. I'm, this might take me forever. Um, and then of course my kids are businessmen already. So anything I, I make them do, we have a negotiation about how much I'm going to have to pay them. Especially now that, that that they know that this actually makes money, they're gonna be like, "All right, so how much do I get?" And I'm gonna tell them, "You get to live in my house. That's what you get." <laughs> oh, that was cool. I actually flipped and and fell and I missed it. Um, all right, so I'm looking at the comments too. I actually play Second Life was pre crypto, but did have money making and crafting, etc. So I think when I look back at Second Life. There's, I have mentors all over the place, but one of, one of my mentors, which you've seen is Paco. He says, timing is not everything. It's the only thing. So I look at this and I look at what Zuckerberg did by saying, we're changing Facebook's name to meta because we believe this is the future of the internet. I think we're just at a sweet spot timing wise where we're, we're closer, moving faster to this than any other time. And Second Life was like more than 10 years ago. So if you think about that, you know, it's just, oh, I don't know what I was thinking, jumping there. Um, I just think we're in this time. And again, what I haven't been able to do well in my career is call timing. I was in AR, VR. 10 years plus ago, you can look at videos of me interviewing the top people in AR, VR. And I thought we were there. I thought we were going to be making AR stuff 
left and right. And it's more than 10 years later, and we're still not where I thought we would be 10 years ago. Again, Facebook saying he's going to spend, uh, Zuckerberg saying he's going to spend $10 billion on the metaverse changes my thinking, but that doesn't mean it's going to go as fast as we hope. All right. This is going to be a problem. I don't know. I'm going to keep doing this. <laughs> um, but I would love to get any, any comments, any questions about any of this, because this is mostly a conversation. Of course, this is like the B roll to this conversation is me falling off these damn wooden blank planks. But <laughs> the real core of this is this is a massive opportunity for the people who act early. I'm trying to be one of those people. I'm trying to educate as many people as possible. That's why I'm creating this content. I could just be struggling on my own, trying to get this, <laughs> these coins, but I want to make it a conversation. I want to make sure people are understanding. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let the knives hit me. I still miss the plane. Awesome. Um, so a comment yeah. that you were saying about like the graphics and stuff. The reason why they make these graphics like this is because they understand that most of these people can't load these programs that they had a lot of graphics on their computer, right? So yeah, makes sense. If you, know, if you know like the 64 bit, which most of these platforms are built on, you know, Microsoft was smart and they came out with the ARM 64, right? And ARM 64 is used on Chromebooks and all of the smaller computers. So now game developers, especially us, are building natively on ARM 64. So now you can buy a cheap Chromebook and be able to play in the metaverse. Got it. Buy $1,700 The chipsets are made for, they, they're really working towards the chipsets of mobile pretty much, right? Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, that's where it makes sense that this is going to be on mobile devices just like Roblox. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. Even though Fortnite has a higher level of view uh, of a look, but e that still even works on mobile. But as Unreal Engine is working on the chipsets, right? So the idea of, I don't know how I'm going to get past this, actually. Let me see if there's an easier way. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we are in this early, early stage that, oh, maybe that's where. Up there, maybe something up there. Um, uh, um, you know, again, what we're looking at right now is not what this is going to end up being. We have to understand that we are like in Nintendo in the eighties, right? <laughs> you know, in a few years, Oh, I got, I got health back. Also, even this, this is a, um, this is a demo. I could see little glitches already here that I'm sure they're working it out. You know, this is the first launch they, and this is only for a certain amount of time. They're going to take this information. They're going to go back, fix all the problems they saw, and then they're going to launch the actual game sometime next year. This is how early we are. This is like seeing Minecraft before anybody could play it. I wonder if I have this sword on or not. Can't tell. Basic sword created double edge. You know what? I'm going to quit and come back. And see if if this uh, sword is still there. Close window. Uh, so I'm on my son's computer um, because I'm not. I don't have a gaming PC like my kids. Um, so this is why I have to do this now because once they come from school, I don't have access to this machine anymore. <laughs> All right, so. Same, been in v, w, v, R, a, R since 2005, ran a VR SIG 1994, still seems early even now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Patrick, I remember you. Yeah, yeah, you were the AR guy. Yeah, yeah. So me and Patrick met at an AR conference probably in 2010-ish. That's how long we've been in this space. So definitely, Patrick, uh, would love to hear what you think about all of this because I know you've been it been in it as long as me if not longer uh all right so what does it say here where do i buy property in the metaverse good question right now the biggest two areas are decentraland and sandbox they have the highest market caps and they are the closest to being used a lot neos is something that milan just spoke about i haven't even looked at that milan can you buy land in neos not yet um 
it's not more like that. It's kind of just like a thing that you build your own worlds in. So it's not, it's, it's more like Roblox where you just create experiences. You don't own land. Yeah. But then you, you could become a Patreon member, which I think everyone should do not financial advice, but you're basically just becoming a member, paying a monthly fee and then getting airdropped these free tokens. Right. And it ah. gives you 7% of the tokens. So, 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 wait, wait, wait. so what you're saying is when you become a Patreon member, they send you tokens. It's not an NFT. You basically pay through Patreon. Yeah, you pay through Patreon. You can go buy a token, obviously, or any, uh, like, different swapping um, AMMs. But you, the smartest way, I think, for people is to do the Patreon because then, like I said, if you're paying, let's say, 200 bucks, you'll get 70% of that to one dollars in tokens and their, their token is going up like crazy so that does make know, sense it, that does make sense so it's a monthly thing or it's a one time it's a monthly thing so you pay them 200 bucks a month but then you're getting that 70 uh, percent in tokens which you're pretty much getting your money back and more every month the thing though this is where not financial advice but you have to understand this even with the nfts the land somebody asked me yesterday should i buy the game pass because the alpha pass you can buy it i want it in a raffle but you could buy it for $10,000. I think it's like $11,000 now. So somebody asked me, multiple people asked me yesterday, would you do that? And what I told them straight up is if I knew I had 10,000 that I didn't need and I wasn't going to be looking for it or need it in any way for a long time, I would do it because I do believe in the future value of all this. But right this second, I don't know how you would reap that reward unless you sell the NFTs, the coin you bought. So then if you're going to have to sell it all to make about a thousand dollars, you're going to pay tax on that money anyway. Right? So if you, let's do the math, you buy this, you buy this for 11,000, right? Okay. Now you get a thousand sand tokens. You get three NFTs. Let's say those NFTs are worth, $2,000 each. The sand is about 7,000. The three NFTs are 6,000. So that's 13,000. So you spend 10 or 11, you made 13. Now you're going to really have to sell those other NFTs and that sand to really make that 13. So that's where part of this, this, the struggle with me with the metaverse is twofold. It's Am I investing for short-term goal? Am I investing for 10, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, right? And then there's two parts. Do you invest in the token or do you invest in the land? And this is where you have to kind of make your own decisions, right? If I would just held on to the land, the token, right? In Decentraland, let me give you the example on Decentraland. I bought a lot of those tokens when they were 40 cents. I decided to buy land. I spent 10,000 mana token on the land, but I had more. If I wanted today, because mana is so high, it went up to four, five dollars or whatever it is right now. If I wanted to sell that property, that's 10,000 mana, I would have to convince somebody to give me $50,000 worth of mana right now. How likely is that currently? I don't know. I haven't tried. I don't want to sell the land right now, but if I needed money right this second, it would take me time to convince somebody to pay 50,000. I think I may need to lower the value of that and say, okay, I'll take 45,000. But if I just had that token, I could sell it right now. No problem. And get all that reward. So this is where short-term, long-term comes in, right? Because sure, in five, 10 years, I may be able to convince somebody to give me 20,000 mana tokens because now there's a lot of people using it. There's business opportunity left and right within the metaverse. People understand that. But right this second, that 10,000 mana is kind of stuck on that land. I don't know if I'm going to be able to bring that out as fast if I needed it. Right. But if I had the coin, no problem. I go to any exchange and get my money back, trade it in for dollars, USDC and get, get the value of that token. So that's something you really have to think through when you, when you, when you go through your metaverse investing mentality and, and, and do your due diligence. 
is it better just to hold the token or do you see a long-term vision of how you will use that land? And I do because I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an investor. I know I'm going to make galleries on the land. Every business I'm a part of is going to have a metaverse presence. Every business I advise, they're going to have a metaverse presence on my land. Anything that I could do to, to better my cash flow, I'm going to do on my land, right? Already I saw that you can, you can rent your land out to other people that want to use it for a month. I'm going to be looking into all of that. And that's part of where I'm saying, okay, I know it's early. I'm willing to, to not need that money for a long time, you know, but I do also look at the eminent crash. There's going to be a crash. There's always, there's always a crash. And I could have jumped out of that manor and kept that cash. And then during the drop buy more, but now because I have that land, I'm kind of stuck unless I want to sell that land and then buy it. So it's like this, these levels of friction into getting in and out of, of an investment. And when you buy land, you're putting yourself deeper in that ecosystem and you're stuck there a little bit longer. You should understand that when you buy land. And I understood it. That's why I did it. Um, and I, I'm okay with that. All right. So Patrick says, I do worry with most things being built on Ethereum with the gas prices, what they are. Yeah. It locks too many people out, hoping that settles out at some point. So only the ultra rich aren't the only ones that can participate. I agree. But as you see, especially with these two, they're both going to Polygon, which is a layer two solution. Layer two solution that the gas fee is very, very low. But even on that layer two solution, the gas fees are growing. Like, I don't know if you guys are using Polygon, but the gas fee is growing. So is the, the gas fee on Avalanche. So I'm looking and I'm saying, is this just a repeat of Ethereum just at a lower price? Because as Ethereum got more popular and more money was inside of it, the gas fee started costing more and more. That's what's happening right now with Avalanche and and Polygon. Um, I was before I was making transactions for like fractions of a penny. Now it's costing a few pennies. <laughs> Not to say that's anything, but it's a big percent jump in what it cost, right? So on on Ave on Avalanche, the other day I made a live. It it took a lot of my Avalanche, and I didn't even notice it because I just thought, okay, this is cheaper than Ethereum. But that gas fee of one of those transactions I did was up there with Ethereum and I didn't even know it. So because I got lulled into the like understanding that the gas fee is just cheaper here, I just accepted anything without watching it. And it's literally, I got the video there and somebody even commented like, you know how much money you just paid on that fee? And I didn't at the time, I just got lulled into the low gas fee thing and I just paid it. I had the money in there, unfortunately, because if I didn't, it wouldn't let me pay it. So there are solutions that are coming out. And this is, I think this is a good, not financial advice, but this is good investment advice right here. There's something called ZK rollups that are starting to become a new wave. What ZK rollups do differently is they bunch a lot of transactions up together. So the more transactions happening, the cheaper the transactions are for us. So if you see ZK roll up in, in a project, that project may do well because in the future, those gas prices are going to go down. So I'm definitely doing my research on ZK roll up projects and stuff like that. So, you know, if there's any questions on any of that, hit me up too, but you're valid. It's a valid point, Patrick, but this is where at least they're going to Polygon right now, which is lower gas fee, but still long term we're talking 10 15 20 years i'm not even sure if polygon is and 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 that is the answer yet we're going to see but we're so early these companies have so much opportunity to pivot change i had an amazing conversation with a company yesterday not sure if i should talk about it yet publicly but once i can i will there's a lot of cool things happening a lot a lot a lot you just got to be wrapped in the space understanding what's going on even understand all this stuff we're talking about here, gas fees, metaverse. This is like a whole different literal universe. Like if you look at the metaverse, this is like another universe that we get to like build and 
figure out together, but we're in the early days. This is so early. This is like the first beta version of one of the most popular, highest value metaverse projects in crypto. This is the third day it's been out. That's how early you are. If you think about that, imagine being on the third day of Microsoft or Apple's first product and where they are now. Like that's, and, and many people believe the opportunity here is going to be much bigger than even those were. Um, again, any questions, any comments to any of that, Milan, Isabel, anybody in Clubhouse um, or anywhere, definitely up for more. Um, I actually don't know if I'm going to be able to pass this. I might need my kids' um, cheat code of playing video games all day every day to actually beat this. Um yeah, well, let's see. Okay, so I was supposed to. I'm trying to go back. Alpha Quest. Can I do an Alpha Quest here? Okay, I need to go. Tell me a bit more. Okay, so on my way. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Okay, so you see these little light yellow things? They're the ones that tell you where to go, which is. Awesome because these also what I really like about sandbox is the land is massive. One piece of sandbox land is massive compared to Decentraland. One piece of land is pretty small. So one piece of land on Decentraland will take you like maybe five, six, seven steps. Here you can go up like 50 stories up and down like it goes down like you could dig into the ground you can go up and create like massive and then it's like you can walk around for like minutes so that's that is pretty awesome all right so i was supposed to okay i need to find these three yellow things maybe that's all i need to get the sand actually let's see i'm here trying to beat an actual game and i might not even need to do that to make the money Hey, 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 Isabel, how are you? I'm good. I was wondering um, if you can talk about people that are interested in just investing some money in Sandbox and not, you know, a lot for land. Like, what are the things you would uh, encourage people to do that are willing to spend some money in this, but not a thousand or more? So <laughs> I would tell you. Hundred or less. <laughs> no, I mean. This is where there's multiple options where, again, remember what I just said, the token is much more flexible of getting in and out and making sure you are in a good position to like, if you needed the money and sandbox went up to $12, you sell some of it. Once you buy the land, you're going to have to convince somebody to pay at that time when the price is the highest to pay what you paid for it, if not a little bit more, right? So that's tougher. Right. But there's, there's another option here, which is you can make, and Isabel, you have a skill set that allows this. And I think with sandbox, there's another big thing. Anybody can make wearables. So you see these little, these men and, and like the sword and this, this plant, all these could be NFTs and you could literally make NFTs that people want to buy for sand. So imagine you made an NFT and you charge one piece of one sand. And you had a thousand people buy that. That's seven thousand sand. That and you didn't have to pay for it. You just made something that was of interest to a lot of people. That's powerful. That's another way of generating money, right? It's just like business, right? You could build, uh, you know, you make a, a a shirt or something for cash. People buy it. You have the cash. In these metaverses, that's another option here. Like you can make something that people will want, and then you have the, the sand. Um, I don't know if that was helpful. Uh, is that, yeah. did I ask you a question? Yeah. Have you looked up how much it costs to put in a wearable in, in sandbox? I haven't yet. That's going to be a thing I get to. Part of me wanted to understand what was possible here. Like, look, these little things right here, somebody made that. That's like a bear made through squares it's called voxel art. So it's a definitely unique type of style that you have to, you know, get used to and understand how to create in it. Um, and as a creator, I've been an animator, designer, all that. 
I am wrapping my brain around this because it's not something I've ever looked at and said, I really like that style. I never really loved the voxel art style. But I'm growing, I'm growing more um, <laughs> interested in it as, you know, an investor and entrepreneur. And I'm looking at stuff like this and saying, wow, that's pretty creative. Like they make fire out of squares. That's pretty cool. And as a creative, I'm always looking for a way to push my creativity, right? So I'm looking at this like, all right, what could I do? If I brought my mind to this, what could I do? Right? So... Again, by walking around and seeing what other people do, you can like start to get inspired, you know? So that's part of why I want to go through all these experiences. And if I was telling myself in another way, if I didn't have this raffle, would I be buying into this? Maybe. It might be a benefit to have this understanding before most people to see 20 design worlds really intimately go through it to start building my ideas out, that might be worth $10,000, sure. Especially because they're giving me sand token and NFTs because I'll just hold those and eventually they'll be worth more. So if you're a person like me that has a creative side that you really want to explore within the metaverse, I would tell you, yes, maybe it is worth buying the Alpha Pass because the sooner you start putting yourself in the environment, seeing what's possible, seeing what's being done, the, the faster you will be able to benefit from it, right? So, you know, that's just my two cents. For anybody who's creative, you don't even have to be creative, man. You Actually, if you're not creative, you may come here and see something that nobody else sees, that creatives don't see. And you may make a, you could come to a creative and say, hey, I want to make this. And they'll do it with you or pay, you pay them to do it and you can make millions of dollars, you know, versus only creatives, gamers, that's why I'm doing it too. I don't really consider myself a gamer at all. I do consider myself a creative technologist. So this is the future of creative and technology. So I got to be there and see where, where the opportunities are, you know? Um, I'm not sure if I answered your question. I went on a, a, a tangent, but <laughs> um, let me know if you have another question, follow up, or anybody else does. All right, like, like this is very much like, like Minecraft. If you look, these are like water cubes. Um, you can walk in them, but it's like a design aesthetic, right? Like, I guess, let me keep figuring out how to make this, this sand token. All right, so Alpha Quest, one of two, let's see NFTs. All right, I don't have any NFTs yet. Um. This is the thing about this. These worlds are pretty big. As you see, like, I don't even remember where I was. <laughs> I'm trying to remember how to get back to where I was. Um, oh, he did say H. There was something with H. Maybe that wasn't here. Oh, oh, I know a way. I know a way. I know a way. All right. So I'm going to quit out of this. I'm going to quit. Also, I don't use PCs much. So I'm like. A little bit lost. All right. So in here it says, you know, play, play again. So this should take me directly to where, and see, this is built on unity. So another thing, people who are not into crypto, I made a video about this months ago too. You, if you're a stock person, you want to invest in unity. Look what they're building this future metaverse in. Unity. What are they building Roblox in? Unity. So if you want to invest in the metaverse, but you don't trust crypto, Unity is, uh, you know, not financial advice, but it is a, a, heavy, a heavily used part of building the metaverse. Um and that's how you look at things, right? Like, what are people going to use? What are people going to do? Unity is also the biggest game engine in the world. I think like 80% of all games are created in Unity. Um, okay, so let's do this again. I'm going to try one more time. <laughs> I doubt I'm going to make it, though. I mean, Unreal is right there with them, though. But Unreal is not public yet. You can't invest in it yet. 
but yeah, I mean, as a creative, I know a lot of people are building on Unreal. But as an investor, if you're just looking at it from an investment standpoint, you can't really invest in anything Unreal yet. Unless you know different. Do you? What do you mean, stock us? Yeah, like like make just make money, not be creative, you know? Gotcha. No, I don't think there's a stock yet. Yeah, I mean, I was looking because my sons, when I went, you know, when Fortnite was going crazy, I was thinking about it too. Like, man, I want to invest in Unreal because, uh, you know, they make Fortnite. Um, how do I do this again? All right. Sword, inventory, press. Hey, but how do I make it? All right. Quest. Reach the portal at the end of the parkour. Yeah, I don't think that's ever happening, guys. Not for me. <laughs> I'm going to have to get my uh, my ringers, a.k.a. my three sons, to get make that happen. Um, so on that note, any final... Oh, wait. What did I do right here? Oh, shit. I left. Um, on that note, I guess... Any questions from anybody? Any comments from anybody? Allison, I know you're you're you've been in the AR game with me for many years. Would love to know what you think about all of this. All right, so a uh, comment from YouTube. I prefer to look of the more realistic looking games, virtual worlds, but I do appreciate the customization, creative aspect of the platform that do have them. Since that's where my interest lies. Yeah, the biggest thing I see with sandbox is there's a there's a like uh how would i say this there's a point of creativity that most people feel like they can't reach so if you see a world that looks amazing and looks like real life you may not feel like you could create for that world right because even me i went to school for 3d animation and I look at these worlds and I'm like, oh my God, the amount of time it would take me to create something that is awesome here, I would have to quit everything else and just do that. But then I look at this and I think there's going to be less friction to people feeling like they could create something cool because it's literally just playing around with boxes and you could spend time playing around with boxes and create something cool versus being a 3D modeler in Maya, 3D Max, <laughs> all these big programs, which I went to school for, and I still, to this day, if I was to have to walk into one of those projects, I would be intimidated, right? So imagine a person that's just a regular person that hasn't gone to, through all that schooling. You're going to have more, you know, like of a barrier to creation. Here... Look at this. Like if you spend enough time and I'm, are creative enough, you could create that. Of course, this is like high level stuff and these are like pros. But I do believe there's less of a barrier of creation here than in the other ones, including Decent Decentraland. I have been a developer, have been an animator, a 3D modeler. And even me, I'm looking at my Decentraland and I'm like, Oh my God, the amount of work it's going to take to build this. I don't think I'm going to do this myself. Sandbox. I think I could do this myself. Again, time is another thing, right? This is going to take a lot of time. Either one is going to take a lot of time, but I think it's going to take less time to do this. Another big thing that I really like about Sandbox, you can make an entire game without writing a line of code. That's interesting. Like when you think about the fact that you can make a game without writing code, again, that starts to lower the barrier, right? I even look at my kids, my, 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 you know, blood kids. And then I think about the Metabronx kids I work with. And I'm like, imagine taking my next Metabronx cohort, which started and saying, look, you got meta, you got land create something cool. Let's see what happens. Versus you got to learn how to do 3D Max. You got to learn how to do my, you got to learn how to code. You got to learn how to, you know, use the, the, um, the terminal because the central land, the way you interact with your land is through the terminal on your computer, which is a heavy developer thing. 
that's a lot of barriers to entry that I think most people are not going to take versus here. You download software, you move squares around and you say, when the square hits this, there's literally like drop down options. Actually, I'll show you, actually, you know what? Maybe that's better than just seeing this cool stuff. I'll show you the, the way games are made. All right. So there's this program called sandbox maker. This one is actually for Apple and Microsoft. So even, so this game, the game that you just saw, you can only play it on PC, but the, the game maker, you can play on Mac. So there's two, there's actually multiple things here. There's the game maker, and then there's the voxel editor to create like these cool characters. So, okay, let's take a template or gallery. Look at this. This is a template that somebody built. Actually, this is on, I can't tell if it's on one piece of land or not. Actually, I want to show you what one piece of land looks like, how big it is. So create one piece of land. You could take a template. Let's do jungle islands. Test. Create. All right, look at how big this is. It's freaking massive. So, all right, and, and you can't really tell the scale yet, right? Because I'm not playing in it yet. But I'm going to, I'll go and I'm going to play. All right, so look how small I am in that world. Think about what you could do with one piece of land here. Look at this. And this is not even going up as high as you can go. I'll show you how high you can go. Watch this. All right, so because it's a template, I can edit it. All right, so I'm going to leave it and I'm going to add some squares. I'm going to do sphere just because they make big, big. Um... All right, so if I go here, I'm also learning how to mess around with this. So, all right, so. Watch how high this goes. Any questions too while I do this, this little experiment? Um, all right. Have you used spatial yet? Have I used what? Spatial. What is that? No, what is it? Uh, it's like another metaverse like this, but it's, they built it on the mobile phone, the computer, and on the Oculus. So you can access it on all three points. And it's what? An app that you just go into? What, what is it? A metaverse? Like you buy land? What? What is it? Yeah, you can... You can actually go on the website spatial.io and then you can literally make your own environments, boardrooms, um, anything you pretty much want. You can scan a whole room and create your own space by just scanning the room with your phone. Look how big. I got to check that out for sure. I think you did tell me about it before. Look at how big that is, right? Like, look at how much space of this land you could do. Like, imagine if you filled the entire one block with multiple games. You could do all kinds of stuff with this one piece of land. So in a way, I do believe this stuff is going to be more valuable than the central land eventually because the central land, one piece of land, nowhere near this amount of space you can use. Nowhere near. And it's not as easy to build on it. It's very, it's, you know, you got to be technical in many different ways to build on the central land. I, I do believe that it still has value, but... When you look at this, man, I did one thing where I like got up there. I didn't want to do it right now because I was just playing, but you could like literally get all the way up and look down and you see all of the land. It's pretty, it's pretty insane. So this is where I'm like looking for partners that want to make games because I don't have time to make games right, right this second, but I, I will invest in the games and, and we make money together. But uh, look at this and you could go down too. You could like dig deeper. You know, I just showed you like the, the full. Look, you could go all the way, the same amount of height, you could go down. So think about how much space you have to interact with, right? All right, so that's this. So I'm going to leave this and I'm going to go to Vox Edit. This is another thing where you make these characters and you animate them. Look at this. See here. Miguel, you remember the. Uh... The coin flip game I did. 
No, I remember. We had so many ideas. What is it? What is it? Tell me. We were just, we were just, what's the most, what's the simplest game that we can play that anybody, we can make, that anyone can play? And it's a coin flip. Oh, just, this was in the early days of Bitcoin, yeah. right? Where we were like, oh, <laughs> yeah. mess. All right, I'll tell you the idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what it was was it was like kind of a gambling game, right? Where you right. put up you put up a certain point amount of Bitcoin. Back then Bitcoin was like, damn, this hurts to say, but I don't even think it was dollars. So you would say, I'm willing to put up 0.2 Bitcoin, which was like maybe 30 cents. And whoever wins the coin flip gets the, the both value. So if we both put up 20 cents. Of 0.20 Bitcoin, which be a lot of money right now, which we were doing it to, um, we would you would be, you would get both together. So I mean, how can we do that with sand? Because basically that's what it is. The sand token would be the Bitcoin of that, right? So let me try to get the Vox edit just so you guys see this. My son and all his games, I can't find it. All right, you know what? It'd be cool if you had like a a world that you're traveling through, but in order to get to the next parts of the world, maybe you had this coin flip that has to happen. You got to win the coin flip in order to get access to the next part. Look, man, I got four pieces of land. Let's go. You can get download this. Let's go. <laughs> you tell me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We, we, we got to get some developers and I mean, not developers. Cause like I said, people are interested in making games. This has never, it's never been easier to make a game. Literally. Uh, I, I don't, I've never seen anything like this. Um, so that's why I really think it's an opportunity. Um, I'm going to try to show you the box edit. Um, but the box edit, I have it on my Mac. You know what? I'll put it here. Um, my son loves it when I install a bunch of stuff on his computer. Um, so the real the real thing here is you have to expand your thinking on how you make money. I just saw a video, and this might be something I end up doing, of a person who bought an NFT that gives them access to a specific game. And... If you have that game, if you have the NFT, you get coins for winning in this game. But you can lend this NFT out to people. So by lending this NFT to people, you basically get a percentage of whatever they make by playing with this NFT. And it's poker, so it's definitely gambling. <laughs> um, so you buy this NFT, it's in Decentraland. You buy it, it's like a hat. There's a bunch of different ones. Uh, the the lowest one costs like, I think it's one Ethereum. It's like $4,000. But there's people making $300 a day using this, this NFT, playing poker. Think about that. That is, that's a job opportunity, right? And from the comfort of your own home, you can make $300 a day playing poker. Right. And this is all possible because of all these pieces, the crypto, the gaming, the metaverse. Um, and this this one guy, he was renting his NFT to somebody in like Colombia or Argentina, I think it was. And in Argentina, people make about three hundred dollars a month. This guy in Argentina was renting the NFT from this guy and making three hundred dollars a day. Think about the globalization aspect of this, where. You know, again, certain parts of the world is cheaper to live, but we're all going to have the same opportunity to make the same amount of money. What does that mean for people who live in the expensive areas? It's going to be, there's going to be some things to go down, right? So I think we got to really start to like, look at this as a whole. All right. So let's see. This is pretty cool. Fire. How the hell they did that? I don't know. Let's see what happens here. Uh, box edit. I did it. Yesterday, template, template, template. Okay. So check this out. Look, swords, head, or whatever. So these are all things you could create and sell, right? So let a shield, the characters, a monkey, an alligator. Um, look at this spider. But look, watch when you when you use it. All right, I'm gonna say spider. All 
All right, so you see this. Somebody, somebody did this all with squares. It's all squares, all right? Okay, this is this is pretty intimidating. Like, God, you got to be pretty creative to do this. <laughs> but check this out. You could, um, they have different animations. So this is one animation, idle one animation. Actually, I think you just jump around. So idle attack. That's an attack animation. But look, it's all done here with drag and drop. All right, attack, death, when it dies. Death pose. All right, so that means it's already dead, I guess. Get hit, so when it gets hit. Idle, again, oh, that's what I already have. Run, walk. So this is all done in here. Again, I haven't got deep in, but this is this is pretty game changing. Like to do this, and Allison knows, Milan knows, we've we've worked with many developers in our lives. This is like paying somebody thousands of dollars to do this kind yeah, of stuff. Say, that's five G's, right? Yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you literally can do yourself now. In two months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And two months if the developer doesn't disappear on you <laughs> which they all do um so templates um i was looking at the dragon there was a dragon or oh, maybe oh yeah here it is large wing no no actually it wasn't that one it wasn't that one it wasn't that one it was this one so i think one of the nfts they're gonna give us is this dragon and i'll show you why i think that so if you go to the alpha and you see rewards this is one of the let's see look so a legendary i'm not sure all, all that means just means more valuable nft this is a uh epic and this is a rare. So I already have this door. So look, it shows you what the door will do. Where do I see that at? I saw it somewhere. I don't, oh, see it in action. Here it is. So basically, this is they just made a cool door, but it because it's from the sandbox team. And look, they make it right in that app. See, but that part is not working for me in the game. I'm not sure if it's a bug or whatever, but. Something like that is simple. This door is going to be worth, they say, thousands of dollars because, I don't know. We'll see. Again, I don't know. But the dragon looks pretty crazy. Again, yes, if you have more art skills and more creativity, you can create cooler shit like this. But if you ever think about the stuff that makes a lot of money, like widget spinners. Who the hell thought about that dumb shit? And how many kids bought those? You know what I mean? Like, right? So you just never know what people are going to buy. Anybody can hit on the right thing. And, uh, oh, look, I come up. Nice. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's such an opportunity with all this stuff. It, it, it's really mind-blowing. My hope is, again, I said I'm going to create mass ideation gaming. I, I've said this a lot. I'm already buying land characters and I'm going to rent them out. I'm going to learn how to make games. I'm going to be, I'm going to be involved in this and I'm not a game person, but I know the opportunity is there. And I know my kids one day they're going to need a job and why not create the company they can own. So they never have to work for other people. Right? So while they're young, they're giving me advice on what they believe is going to work, but I'm slowly getting them involved. Right? Like, Oh, look, you can do this. <laughs> we'll see if it works. Um, any questions, advice, or comments based on any of this? Because on that note, I got to go pick them up from school pretty soon. Anything. Yeah, when you have time, check out uh, your email. I sent you our invite to our board room in Spatial. So you can see like all the shoes and everything we're going to do. All our board meetings will be there. Dope. All right. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. But Allison, what are you about to say? Oh, uh, how much did you pay for the for your land? So, 
this is a so when I paid for it, I was I was making YouTube videos like crazy, trying to get people to do it, but it was fifteen hundred dollars. So now the cheapest one, at least the last time I checked, was like fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> so I caught it at a good time. I don't know. I do believe the price is gonna go up and down. Twelve thousand. So it went down three thousand dollars. <laughs> well, actually, at one point it was seventeen thousand. But I do believe part of the reason was because of what's going on with this. I think. The only way for you to get access to this was to be a landowner. At first, there was a raffle. So I think people were selling the land so they had an, so people can get an opportunity to win this. I think that's why it got to like $17,000. Um, going forward, though, I, I said it earlier in, the, in the, the, the stream, one of the developers we work with at Metabronx, he found a tool that said, you know, algorithm... It was an algorithm that when you put your land in, it told you what it believed the value was. So he said he put one of my pieces and it said it was worth $25,000. I did not pay $25,000. I paid $1,500. So, and it was like half an ETH. Back then, Ethereum was about three grand when I bought it. Um, so it, it sucks because that's like, it's like Bitcoin, right? Like we could have bought it two years ago for five grand. Now it's 60 grand. Every year that you wait, it's going to be like, man, I should have bought it last year. I do believe, though, that it will come back down. I don't know how far. I doubt it will ever come back down to 1500 to be honest. And look, you can see the, on OpenSea how popular. And I do believe this is because they were leading up to this. Maybe after the um, this whole like Alpha Pass thing is over with, probably it comes down. Because what's going to happen is the game is not launching for another few months. So maybe there's a low there at some point. Maybe the market crashes. Plus that low, there may be an opportunity to jump in at that point. But yeah, if you want to partner, let's go. I got four pieces of land. Again, nothing is live though. So we are building stuff before the game goes live. That's a good opportunity and, you know, some time. But at the end of the day, I see it as if you catch the right cool game when, when this all starts, you're going to get a lot of traffic. Because there's going to be so few people. I, I heard somewhere that 80% of landowners have zero, zero way of making stuff for their land. So if you're in the 20% and you actually make something cool and that actually can make people money, you're probably going to do pretty well. So that's where I hope to be. Of course, that's not just going to be me. It's going to be a whole team of people. Um, so if you're interested, join the Discord. I have a gaming area. Um, I've been buying NFTs. I bought a guild and guild of guardians. That's also going to be a way of making money. Again, that game, who knows when it's going to come out. Um, I bought race cars for rev that you can rent out. I bought characters in this game called Bizoji, where you're going to be able to rent them out and they can play and you can buy the coin. Um, and I'm actually meeting with those developers soon. Uh, so there's so much fucking opportunity. And I'm sure I'm missing some. Oh, I actually bought a bunch of characters for Guild of Guardians. What else? I'm going to make a website showing all the, 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 the things that are available. But I want to make a, a, a group of content creators that are gamers that are for this metaverse gaming world. Hopefully minorities, right? Because one of the biggest thing is we're not really represented in the content creation of any of this. If you look on, on YouTube and anything, there's very rarely a minority, a black, Hispanic person talking about any of this stuff. So I'm trying to be one of them. I want to create more. Um, I know me by myself, I'm not going to be able to do it. Um, and I can't even go live as often as I want to go. So the more people doing, talking about this, that we could create groups helping each other grow, that's interesting to me as well. So, you know, on that note, um, thank you for coming by and, and, and hanging out and seeing all this crazy stuff. Any questions before I leave? Any comments or anything? All right. So if that is the case, thank you and see you on my next stream. I don't know when it will be. Probably next Wednesday. Thank you. Bye.